So, I was running around on Amazon, more than likely purchasing another manga volume, when this book was suggested to me. Me, I can't help but be curious about all the manga out there anyway. But yeah, the cover art stopped me in my tracks, and for one reason only. It was the girl's expression. I mean, look at that. When I read the title, I found out that yeah, she has bad eyesight, so she's squinting. But dude, this is both cute and funny at the same time. I mean, it totally looks like she's ticked off. Like whatever the guy said just totally disturbed her. And she's basically questioning his very existence now. She's all like, seriously bro? I mean, really? So yeah, that alone was what sold me. Just check out her face on the second volume. You're supposed to know she's not mad, but really, she totally looks like she's questioning why the guy's even there. Or else she is just outright disturbed that he just said what he said. But it's the cutest thing ever. Now, my taste for stories, as far as genres are concerned, are just all over the place. Since this one is a romantic comedy, yeah, I'm here for the good laughs. I'm not going to discuss the story. I put this video together to celebrate the way this artist drew the girl's expression. I've read up to volume 6. I don't know how many volumes there are total, but I'm totally buying them all. The way the jokes hit along with her face, don't worry, it's a good read. So yeah, this is The Girl I Like Forgot Her Glasses by Kome Fujichika. Now, on to the first panel. And keep in mind, as many shots as I show in this video, there are tons more in the whole series. I just snapped a few along the way. What I mainly wanted to focus on in this video is when Mie, the main girl here, is in the background of panels. I zoomed in when taking this picture, so she looks larger than she is in this panel, but I totally like the way the Japanese artists handle less detail on characters at a distance. So all you get is her eyes and mouth, and see, it totally looks like she's mad about something, but she's totally not. Really, who could say what she was feeling or thinking at that moment, but because she's so small here it makes it even funnier. In this one, I think the main guy, Kamura, had asked her something, and she had to think about why she did what she did. So, the little tilt of the head, the consideration, plus her squinting expression, it all adds up to cute and silly. And since she's drawn so small, the lack of detail, except for what's needed, that just drives it home. Again, it totally looks like she's judging the guy. I mean, really, how many manga have you read out there where a character says something dumb or silly, and another character gives them this look, but she's totally not trying to be that way here. And here, I think it's funny how the artist will include small dialogue over the character's head, but they don't put it in a word bubble, almost like it's an aside comment spoken under their breath. But here, it totally goes with her expression, even though she's blushing. The squinting just pushes it to the limit. Another example, like, dude, what did you just say? But she's not mad, I swear. I can't exactly remember what was happening in this panel, but there's a running gag the artist uses whenever Kamura asks Mie something, and there's a pause where she considers, and then a lot of times the result of the scene is her being embarrassed about something, or he's just straight up confused about her. Even when she does remember her glasses, the small panel, less detailed expressions are funny, almost like there's no difference. But here, at least, we know she disapproves of something. I remember what it was, too, but I'm not going to tell you. You got to read the manga. Some evidence of how confused Kimura gets when he's trying to figure Mie out. But yeah, another small panel, less detail in the character's expressions. We don't even get Mie's mouth here, but she's blushing while wearing her glasses, so it's fun to look at. Then we get times where she's wearing that fixed squint. But the artist uses those surprise lines to convey emotion where none is presented on her face. Again, she's totally not mad. She's holding a photo of Kimura when he was a kid, so she was having to hold it real close just to be able to see it. I guess I have to tell you what happened in this scene to give her a reaction and apology some context. In the photo, it shows a younger Kimura on the, on the playground. He fell off a set of bars and his nose is bleeding. 
Mie straight kisses the photo, like she was trying to kiss it better, right? Realizing what she did, she immediately comes to her senses, but it's too late. <laughs> Just approaching someone with a simple question, it totally looks like she's already ticked off at them. But then she's all energetic, waving goodbye to someone while wearing that same squint, almost like she's totally oblivious of the vibe she's giving off, though it's totally charming at the same time. I mean, really, she's all nonchalant while doing something that requires a lot of energy, but it looks like she's bored or got something on her mind that's got her all bothered. You gotta wonder, though, how long could she go through her day wearing that expression? That takes willpower and muscles. She ever get a headache or just plain worn out? Then, of course, there's her pondering squint. She's totally checking out the dude, but if he didn't know any better, yeah, he'd think she was just done with him with that expression. <laughs> Again, I love how Japanese artists approach drawing small characters at a distance. You get just enough, and especially with girls, this blushing expression on Mie is just too dang cute. But yeah, I think my favorite moments is when she's looking up at somebody, or just suddenly has to consider a question, and there's this tilt of the head, and just enough detail to get that funny squint of hers. Boom, she's shocked. Yep, maybe she's getting worn out from squinting. So closing them gives her a moment of peace. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, this manga is for those who are into romance, sure. But I was way more into how the artist portrayed Mie's quirky character and how Kimura reacted to every bit of it. Who would have thought that cute and fun would be a great read, am I right? Sure, the kids might like it, but this here is graphic. Let me know if you're mad at me in the comments. Peace. If you like this story, you might be into the type of stories I write. They tend toward fantasy, but of course, it's the more spiritual kind of take on the genre, instead of the swords and dragons type. Take my action fantasy graphic novel, Impisha. She was once revered as the champion of the five. Now she's cast her back on her kingdom, which has been slowly infiltrated by the very influence she fought against. Dragged into a secret war, she finds herself occupying the spirit realm while affecting the physical world, aided by loyal and new allies while having to fight against those she fought alongside before. In my novel, Ancient Days, there is an urban legend about a swordmaster who can't be sought after, but he seeks out those he wants to join his sword school. Each student is dealing with some type of inner turmoil in his lessons, they learn how to fight against their demons. To remember each student, he crafts a sword that embodies their spiritual journey to wholeness. However, not all students can be helped. Two of them stole the swords crafted in memory of them, believing it was the weapon itself they needed to be whole. Another student takes a special sword the master crafted and goes to take back the weapons that have been stolen. The link to these stories is available in the description below. Don't be scared, and thank you. Perhaps we'll meet one day.